guys, Sonny Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the Roidme F8 or should I say the Xiaomi Roidme F8. The Roidme falls under the Xiaomi umbrella and this vacuum cleaner can be found for around £285. Now that might seem like a lot to some people, however when you compare it to the equivalent Dyson V8, which is where this uh, product is essentially marketed against, then you will see this is actually quite a cheap product because the Dyson equivalent can be found for 350 to 400 pounds. So check in the links in the description below for any buy links to the actually Roidme itself or the Dyson equivalent. So in this review, I'll be comparing it very much to the V8 or the V8 Absolute to be more specific and also be commenting on it versus other products out there. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, I want to talk about what you actually get in the box. So going through these, you've got the actual main unit itself with uh, the bin which is included and I'll get into that in just a bit, it's also for removal. Uh, then you've got an EU power plug, so at least in my case I got an EU power plug. It's worth bearing in mind that certain people have reported getting US ones with an adapter. Nevertheless, all I can say is that the one I've got has got EU even though I'm in the UK. Um, there's an extra HEPA filter if you need it, um, which you will over a couple of months. A cleaning tool, a wall mount, it's a magnetic wall mount which is quite nice because it's got magnets over here which make it quite nice to actually uh, dock in and out. Now I haven't been able to drill in my hole but uh, in, in the wall but in terms of the way it works it just seems very nice and quite sturdy. So um, it's props to um, Xiaomi or Xiaomi Roid me for actually designing this. Uh, there's also uh, screws that you can attach and put them to the wall. You've got a crevice tool, you've got a uh, small brush or a soft brushing tool for your keyboard or what have you. You've got a soft roller. Now you can see this is not doesn't come like the Dyson equivalent in a separate head and I'll show you why in just a second. Uh, you've got an extension hose um, and, as, and it's, as you can see it's fully uh, flexible and then you've got a mattress brush as they call it. Uh, this is a motorized, small motorized tool with the um, with the same sort of bristles uh, that you'll find on the main um, motor head. You've got a set of manuals and there's an app which comes included, which I'll get into in a bit. Uh, there's the, um, the main rod itself, which is made out of metal, which is really well um, kept and it doesn't uh, suffer from any flex. Uh, the connectors themselves are actually really well made. Uh, then you've got the main uh, brush unit, um, or the electric brush as they call it, with a light sensor over here and um, I must say that actually works very very well and I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, then other than that in terms of the movements that you've got, um, you've got a nice sort of uh, bearings on either side and then a sort of uh, a little hose over here that extends up and down. Now I said I wanted to show you this soft roller and in very much the case of the Roidme here unless, unlike you get with the Dyson you do have to exchange the two rollers and by doing this you have to use this little latch opens up this little plastic bit and then essentially you get the uh, normal roller out and you essentially replace it with the soft roller so therefore you've got the same head uh, operating for uh, the two um, different uh, brush heads. Now in principle this is quite nice because what it means is that you can have it all operating on the one um, thing but as you can see it can be a little bit fiddly uh, to put the actual uh, head in. You have to make sure as you can see it is properly plugged in and then uh, once that's done then you can start using the soft roller instead of the normal brush head. What I did find with this sort of setup is that it's quite cool because it does take less um, amount of space in your cupboard because you're using only one head rather than two separate heads. However, it does make your hands dirty. In my case, I had flour which I was testing with this vacuum cleaner and I've got now flour on my hands which is not quite what I want when I'm using a vacuum cleaner. I just want it to be as clean as possible uh, without actually affecting my own body. So I know it sounds very trivial but to some people, um, including myself, I do find that a little bit of uh, annoyance so it's just worth bearing in mind. Other than that the actual light sensor as I mentioned before does operate really well. Here you'll be able to see a video of me uh, basically playing with that light sensor. It automates really really instantaneously and there's an LED strip um, along the front of the uh, roller head and it just works really well in terms of showing you where there's dust particles or things that you might have missed. Specifically, for example, if there's like small shards of glass, if you want to sweep them up, then you can do so uh, with a little bit more ease because you'll be able to see that sort of reflection off those LEDs. 
So I really like what uh, Roy Me have done here with the, um, the the brush head, the main brush head, and the actual design of it, um, and specifically with those LEDs. It's something that you don't see on the Dyson, and most of the time don't see on um, rival uh, vacuum cleaners at this price point. So it's very much a a plus point. Now something I actually wanted to mention as well is the actual connectors themselves. Now the connectors to me are absolutely ex extremely well built to the point that they're actually sometimes a little bit hard to remove because of how well built they are because they've got like sort of rubbery material um, a feeling around it which causes a bit of friction therefore can be a little bit hard to remove. But as you can see it's quite nice to uh, add in and then to remove you press the button and you really have to use kind of two hands to push it out. But other than that, I must say the build quality of the actual connectors, be it on the main metal rod to the actual main unit or any of the heads is fantastic. So the build quality here is great and to me doesn't have any sort of indication of it will not last that long. If anything, this is much better built than a premium cordless vacuum cleaner such as the Dyson V11. So props to Roid Me for actually integrating a good sort of build quality around this part of the unit which you know in some cases will be the one where most people are actually accessing the most when they're removing tools and popping new ones in and out. Now let's move over to the main unit itself and I must say what Roy and me have done over here is great in terms of design. From the actual feel of this white sort of plastic rubbery -y sort of feel to it to the actual design of the product itself it's absolutely fantastic. Now what I really like about this is the actual handle. Now the handle might seem again trivial to some but that weight that you've got is all pretty much uh, at the head. So therefore you want to make it as comfortable as possible when you're using it. In this case you can use it in two ways. For example if you're reaching hard to, well hard to reach places, let's say your ceiling, you want to get those cobwebs off, then it's quite easy to switch the position between um, the, the handle and use it in a different way. It's quite nice and quite intuitive and the way that it's been designed and integrated in terms of the overall main body is very much commendable. I must say that Roid Me here have actually uh, smashed it out of the park. You can see why they actually won an award for design when it comes to vacuum cleaners because no other vacuum cleaner I've come across personally has a sort of similar versatile design. Now in terms of using it, it's quite simple. You've got one simple button at the top which operates the on and off. So if I just press it on now, it takes two seconds to switch it off. It's very intuitive and unlike the Dyson, you don't have to constantly hold it down with a trigger. You simply press it and then you're on with your cleaning. At the back, you've got the boost button, which essentially uh, enables the more powerful mode uh, that the Roid Me offers. Um, and I must say, again, it's very easy and it, you're not going to accidentally press it either. At the bottom you've got the DC connector with a little flap um, which protects the actual connector itself. Again, good implementation and a no nice design overall. As you might have saw, uh, seen before, there is a magnetic strip over here which means that you can uh, kind of uh, tap it to the wall, so to speak, for it to remain in place. Now in terms of the nozzle, you can see over here the nozzle has a little flap. Uh, hopefully you can see my finger moving it, but the little flap over here prevents debris coming back up the nozzle and out, um, either through here or through your um, the, the metal rod. So that's a good implementation. Um, and it, you can see over here it feeds into the actual bin over here. Now, I've got no complaints in terms of the design of the bin. I think it's quite, um, it's quite nifty and the way it works is quite simple. Uh, it clicks into place and clicks out of place very, very easily. There's no problems whatsoever. However, the bin size itself to me is a bit of a concern. At 0.4 liters, it's not exactly the biggest bin. Now, if people will recall uh, like the Dyson V6, for example, or, or previously, they were small bin sizes and unlike the more later Dysons which are have a bigger bin capacity. This is stuck to 0.4 liter. Now this won't be a big problem for those who have a small bedroom apartment, one bedroom apartment or one that doesn't have that much carpet but if you have a lot of um, pet hair or even like human hair uh, in terms of if you've got long hair uh, then what you'll find is that the this will this capacity will need to be emptied quite regularly. So again, that might not be a problem if the actual mechanism to open it wasn't so counterintuitive. In my opinion, I just found the latch uh, mechanism just not really that well 
well served. As you'll be able to see over here, I was emptying a bunch of Cheerios out of the bin. And what I found is that I had to uh, not only open up the bin, kind of shove it and um, tap on the side in order to get those Cheerios out because of the hard plastic shell which protects the bin, but I also had to remove the complete filter filtration unit in order to find those Cheerios that were stuck all the way up into, um, into the bin. And to me, that's just not really intuitive. And the way this works in comparison to the Dyson equivalent, for example, is just not as well thought out. So yes, we do have a very easy to access bin and a, a fantastic design on uh, the actual main unit, but the way it actually operates on a daily basis can be frustrating to use, especially if you have, as I said, hair or large debris such as Cheerios uh, that you have to empty um, regularly. And again, it is, subjective it is based on your own you know, usage but all I can say is that this is just less versatile to use than the Dyson V8 equivalent. So another thing that you'll be intrigued to know about is the Roidme F8 actually has an app. It's the Roidme uh, app and it's really intuitive you just have to sign up to it which some people will be against but nevertheless if you get it and when you have it, then you've got firmware updates that you can apply over the air to your uh, Roidme F8. And it connects pretty much instantaneously over Bluetooth. You just simply turn on your Bluetooth, connect, press connect, and a little blue LED shows up on the Roidme F8 to indicate it is now connected. In terms of battery life usage, it uses very much minimal battery life because it's using Bluetooth low energy, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can use the app without having to worry about too much about the battery life. Now, in terms of the actual device itself, what you can do, uh, as I can, uh, as I will show you, in terms of the device control. So first of all, the most important thing is the actual uh, standard. It's a standard gear. It's essentially the output that you get. Now you've got 80, 130 and 180 watt. Now this is to me nice to see that it's included in the app, but a little bit annoying at the fact that you have to use the app in order to access this. This is the lowest suction power uh, settings that you get on the, um, on the Roidme. When you go to the max power setting or the boost power setting via the back of the Roidme, that will automatically override the settings and go to another level. To give you an indication, that's the in terms of the kilopascals um, that I measured with the separate modes, you got 7.5 at 80, 11 at 130, and 14.5 at 180. So it just gives you an idea of what suction power you should expect when using these different modes. Um, other than that, you can also upgrade the firmware, as I mentioned before. All you have to do is be connected to a network. Then you've got the battery information, which is actually quite unique because it actually shows you in terms of the voltage, the, even the temperature of the battery itself, and then the filter and statistics. So for example, when you have to clean your filter and how have you been using it, it's actually all really useful. But it's not essential when you're using the actual Roidme, it's just an optional extra that you can have. So now we get onto the more interesting part, the actual performance of the product. Now before going into that and, and before going to the battery life as well, I want to talk about the noise. What I found is that the actual machine itself is relatively quiet for a machine that has quite a lot of suction power. I didn't find it to be overly loud and neither did I find it to be overly silent. It was kind of like in the midway point and without further ado, here's a little sound demo of it running on short pile carpet while doing the battery life test. So hopefully that was a relatively good sound demo for you guys to, to hear. It's coming through my um, uh, the camera's microphone, so it's not going to be the best, including the actual audio recording of this video as it is, but nevertheless, it's just one that you can actually use yourself as just a sort of indication of how this thing actually sounds like. Now let's go on to the battery life, and this is where this thing really impressed. Despite not having removable batteries, the actual unit itself served a great purpose in terms of overall battery. In this case, I had around 10 minutes of battery life on the most powerful setting, whilst on the normal lowest setting that, uh, that you use and that you set through the app, what I found is that this lasted around 46 minutes, which in comparison to the Dyson equivalent is almost double 
in terms of battery life. To give you an indication, the Dyson V8 Absolute, which is using the normal brush head, will last around 25 minutes, whilst on boost mode will last around 7 minutes. So as you can see over here, the Roid Me actually lasts longer. But what about suction power? Because that is pretty much hand in hand in terms of suction power. So when it comes to performance here, I was actually really impressed. Now measured in kilopascals with a little suction meter popped on top and done on the lowest mode setting, as you might have seen before on the app, you've got three separate lower mode settings. It had around 7.5 kPa. Now in this respect, in comparison to the Dyson equivalent, you're looking at around 8.3 kPa. So it's a little less powerful on the lowest suction mode, but it's very much fractionally lower. But then in the highest suction mode, so therefore on the powerful mode set, uh, selected, and using the normal brush head, here it jumped up to 24 kilopascals, which was vastly impressive because the Dyson equivalent last um, had around 19 kilopascals. In this respect, what I found is that the actual unit itself was able to actually have and provide more suction power. So for me, when it came to the actual flower suction um, on hardwood floor, what I found is the, the Roid Me was able to pick up all the flower that was left on the floor. So therefore, it wasn't leaving any residue whatsoever when it was on hardwood floor. And that was with the normal brush head, let alone the soft roller head, which performed a little bit better. In comparison, the Dyson V8 was a little less powerful and therefore provided not as a flawless um, run on hardwood floor. Of course, you could use the soft roller head and therefore get the same sort of equivalent uh, performance, but as an overall um, performance here, the Roid Me come up, comes out on top with flower on hard, uh, hard floors. Now when we move to short pile carpet, both vacuum cleaners very much struggle. They're not very much in the same sort of league as like the Dyson V11 or the Tineco uh, S12 um, Pure One. In this respect, both of them did leave a lot of residue left on the short pile carpet test and even on um, longer carpet or just normal fluffier carpet, so to speak, again, both of them struggled. This was using the normal brush head and on both units and again what I found is that there was a lot of residue. So I had to do several passes to the point where I actually got rid of the uh, brush head altogether, used the uh, crevice tool in, in order to get rid of those small debris. So if you do have short pile carpet what you will be looking to get is either a more powerful cordless vacuum unit or an actual corded unit, an upright vacuum cleaner altogether. So these things aren't powerful enough to get those small debris or fine debris that you'll find on um, a short path carpet. Moving on to the Cheerios or the larger debris test, what I found is that on the short path carpet it actually does a fantastic job both on low power or high power settings. Here the actual Roid Me F8 picks up all the Cheerios in this test and had no problems in sweeping up um, everything on one pass or let alone two passes. Move over to hard flooring however, it did struggle. Why I say it did struggle, that was on the highest mode setting using the normal brush head. Even with the soft um, roller head, I still found a few problems with the highest mode settings and that's simply because the Cheerios would get jammed in the actual main unit itself and or the actual bin, therefore not allowing any suction to happen and therefore causing a blockage and even when you switched off the vacuum cleaner, all the Cheerios would kind of spew out of the nozzle. In this case, what I did is turned it down to the lower power mode setting, just like with the Dyson, then it was able to pick up all the Cheerios in the test without any problems. So overall, in terms of performance, where it goes, I must say the Roid Mui does a fantastic job. In a vacuum cleaner in its class, specifically compared to the Dyson V8 equivalent, the Roid Mui actually comes out on top in terms of overall performance using the normal brush head. Then we take into the soft uh, roller head into the equation and you're sweeping up hard floors. Then the soft roller head actually does an even better job when it comes to cleaning either fine debris, um, flour for example, or, or large debris like Cheerios. The soft roller head will give you pretty much a flawless execution across hard flooring. So this all leads me on to the conclusion. What do I think of the Roid Me F8? Well first off, Let's talk about the actual cons or the things that I don't like about this product. 
First of all, and the biggest problem I found was the actual bin. Not in terms of the design, as I mentioned, but in terms of actually emptying the bin and the actual bin size capacity. Here, the Dyson V8 equivalent does a lot better. It has a bigger bin capacity and a much better design, making it a lot easier to empty out the bin. Then, let's talk about the pros, and here, there's almost too many to list. For starters, the design itself is absolutely fantastic. I really like what Roy Me have done. The handle is beautifully designed. The fact that you don't have a, a trigger system which can't be left on, it kind of infuriates me about the Dyson, but in here, you don't have that. You've just got a simple button and then a power button, essentially, to get into boost mode. You've got simple LEDs which show you the battery life and if there's any sort of blockage that you need to do or empty out the bin. The actual build quality of the, the unit itself and the accessories is fantastic. The, ways, the way they attach, the way they feel and the sort of premium feel that you get, even though it's made out of full plastic, is incredible. And then also on terms, in terms of the actual design itself, the actual magnetic strip which is used for the wall mount means it's quite intuitive to take in and out um, from, your, from your wall you know, without having to click it into place or use a certain sort of um, maneuver to put it into place. And then, most importantly, the actual performance attributes with this machine are absolutely incredible. From the battery life being pretty well, I mean, when I say pretty well, almost double of that of the Dyson, to the actual performance in terms of suction power, doing a great job overall in different sort of floor types, of course not being as flawless as, as it could be in comparison to other cordless vacuum cleaners, but for its price, again, and for its category, it's class leading. And then in terms of the actual noise, it's not too loud either. I mean, in all honesty, I don't see a big problem with the Roid BF8. If anything, it's one of the best vacuum cleaners you can find under 300 pounds. And forget about under 300 pounds, if we take under 400 pounds even, I would probably still pick this Roid Me F8. So that's pretty much it. That's my review of the Roid Me F8. I am very, very impressed with what Roid Me F8 done over here, coming to a competitive um, place and competing with the likes of Dyson, which is vastly popular around the world and vastly well known. They've produced a product which is fantastic, and I can't stress it enough. I really love this product. So there we go. If you've enjoyed this review, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more unbiased, unpaid, independent content, and check out that in the links in the description below if you want to see any alternatives to this product. And more than anything, let me know in the comments below what you think of the Roid Me F8. If you own it, if you're thinking about getting it, or if you've got any questions, uh, things I might have missed, let me know. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.